<clears throat> Hi guys, here's part four of the Cold War revision lecture. Um, hopefully you've watched the other parts, um, but just remember you shouldn't just be using this lecture as your only revision um, resource. Um, there's um, slides for this lecture on show my homework, um, not on the table in front of me, but I can't show you both using my iPhone. Um, also, you need to be using your revision guides or exercise books or any other things that you have um, alongside this. Watching this itself will not be enough. OK, so um, part four, then um, we're now on to um, detente. So looking at the period of time where um, relations between the two sides are starting to improve or hopefully starting to improve. So looking at the different um, agreements of detente, the SALT um, agreements and the Helsinki Accords, and also the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and the consequences of that. OK, so uh, um, I'll make a start. So the reason for detente, um, if you think, you know, look, um, looking particularly at part three of the lecture, all of the problems that have been going on, it was kind of clear for both sides that things had to change. They were spending serious amounts of money um, making nuclear weapons, threatening each other. But actually, um, kind of by the end of the 1960s and the 1970s, there was a lot of problems going on in both countries or both sides in America and the USSR. And really, they needed some time out um, so they could focus on themselves. You know, in America, um, the Vietnam War was taking place at a huge cost. Um, there was um, civil rights issues going on. There was riots going on in America. Martin Luther King was assassinated, which caused huge, problem, huge problems. And politically, both governments were under huge strain. In your exercise books or revision guides, it will tell you in more detail what the problems are. But it's quite important, particularly if you had a narrative account question on this, to show your understanding of why um, both sides were in need for detente. And detente simply means like um, cooling um, of relations or improving relations. So the first step to detente was um, the agreement of SALT 1. SALT is the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. And SALT 1 basically had three agreements to it. Um, it agreed that anti-ballistic missiles um, were only going to be allowed at two different sites and each site should only have 100 missiles. Um, and, uh, and that was the uh, um, initial treaty of, uh, of SALT 1. There was also the interim treaty and it restricted the number of ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, each side was allowed. The USA had just over 1,000. Um, and the USSR had just over 1,600. Um, they were allowed more because the USA had more strategic bombers. Um, so remember, it's the limitations treaty, not reductions treaty. You know, it, they've still between them got, you know, just over two and a half thousand missiles. So certainly enough um, to destroy the world a few times over. But there was also the basic uh, principles agreement as well. It banned placing nuclear warheads on the seabed. And they agreed, I suppose is the most important bit, to exercise restraint if war looks likely. So basically they promised that if it ever looked like there was going to be a war, let's say another Cuban Missile Crisis, for instance, they would exercise restraint and do their best not to start a war, which I suppose is very nice of them. Um, there was also the Helsinki Accords in 1975. Uh, this was between uh, another American president, President Nixon, and also Brezhnev. He's still there. Um, and you remember this one as the three baskets. Basket one of this agreement is that borders are inviolable. That basically means you cannot violate borders. You cannot invade another nation. The borders are what they are. So, for example, that kind of clarified East Germany or the um, GDR as, um, as an official country. And those borders could not be changed. So I suppose quite a good thing for the USSR, that one. Um, basket two, trade agreements between the two sides, technology exchanges and a joint space mission. So it showed that the sides are working closer together. And there was also basket three um, to respect human rights, freedom of speech and religion and movement across Europe. Something which would have been quite difficult for the um, USSR, seeing as freedom of speech wasn't allowed. So that one probably more of a victory for the USA. But it seems like relations were really starting to improve. And then on the doorstep of that was SALT two. However, you will remember that SALT II doesn't actually get ratified in the end. Um, but they'd have agreed to place more restrictions on ICBMs. But it wasn't ratified because of a few reasons. There's four, and the fourth one we'll go into in more detail. But there was communist groups in places kind of close to America, in El Salvador, Nicaragua and Angola. Um, and again, it would look bad if America was making these peace agreements with the Soviet Union, but allowing other countries to become under communist rule. 
Um, Islamic militants um, captured um, US embassy in Tehran, which is in Iran. And again, America, you know, couldn't follow this idea of peace um, and kind of just allow um, this militant group to get away with what had happened in Tehran. Um, President Kennedy um, was kind of encouraged and forced to take a stronger stance on uh, the USSR. And also the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, which broke um, one of the baskets in the Helsinki Accord where the borders are inviolable. Um, so SALT II, although it was planned out to kind of further reductions of, of uh, nuclear weapons, it never actually happened, which actually signals the end of detente. So kind of a relatively short-lived thing. And I suppose the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan is the main kind of event you need to know, which signifies the end of detente. Um, another kind of question which could be a contender for the narrative account. Um, so some information about the invasion of Afghanistan. You need to be on slide 23 for this. Um, I'm simply using a map and the knowledge organiser which you have already stuck in your books. But just to try to put it into context, um, the Soviet Union was invest, um, interested in Afghanistan. If you have a look on the map, you'll see it borders the south of the Soviet Union. Afghanistan borders Iran and Iran um, was starting um, um, to have strong influence from um, like Muslim fundamentalist groups. And... Um, Afghanistan itself being um, a heavily um, kind of um, populated country by um, uh, Islam, it was clear that if fundamentalism kind of um, took a, a stronghold in Iran, it might spread into Afghanistan. And I suppose the fear for the Soviet Union is it might spread north. Um, that would be a bad thing for the Soviet Union because it would take away like communist power. Um, I suppose as well it would be a good thing for the USA, if you like, if... Um, uh, the power of the Soviet Union was weakened. Um, so uh, basically, um, uh, Afghanistan had a new government, a pro-Soviet government, and um, uh, Amin was put in charge, the leader of Afghanistan, and he had support from the USSR. But Amin, the leader of Afghanistan, was really worried about the threats from Iran as well. So he actually started getting some help from the USA. Um, and the USA... Um, supported Amin um, uh, in kind of keeping out these extreme um, kind of fundamentalist groups, um, which was kind of terrible for Brezhnev because that would put American influence in Afghanistan on the doorstep of the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union decide to invade Afghanistan. Now they're saying that they're invading Afghanistan because not to take it over, but to help protect them against Iran. However, um, Three days later, Amin was assassinated. So that looked um, a little bit dodgy because it seems like the Soviet kind of um, like secret police, if you like, um, had um, assassinated him because um, he was kind of befriending America, if you like. Um, and then a new leader was placed. But the Soviets remained in Afghanistan for the next 10 years. And this was really, really bad because they promised in detente to end invading other countries. They promised that borders were inviolable. They promised to exercise restraint. But it was clear here that the Soviets were not doing that. And America just thought that this was an attempt for them to spread communism into like the Middle East. So the American reaction was, um, was kind of quite extreme. Carter, the president of America, claimed that they were a threat to world peace and they withdrew salt too. And, um, here he stated his own Carter Doctrine, where basically they would repel any threats from the USSR by force. Again, it seems like war between the two sides was, was close once again. He also placed some economic sanctions on the USSR, which put them kind of in a little bit more trouble. The impact of um, this on relations um, was, uh, was um, also pretty bad. Um, the, America um, and a bunch of other countries boycotted the 1980 Moscow Olympic Games. Now, the Moscow Olympic Games was a great opportunity for the Soviet Union to show how great communism to the rest of the world, but it looked like a second-rate event um, without some of the major nations there. Again, you can look um, in your revision guides or in your exercise books in more detail about what happened at those games, but certainly it was pretty bad. And then also, um, after President um, Carter, there was a new American president, Ronald Reagan, and he stated the USSR were an evil empire. They were trying to spread communism around the world. And he announced the Reagan Doctrine and basically they said they'd support any anti-communist groups and also the new policy was to roll back communism. 
Now, Reagan had noticed that um, the communist countries economically were in trouble. He'd seen what was happening in Czechoslovakia and other places. He knew from detente that Amer um, the Soviet Union wanted to decrease their spending. So he actually decided to increase America's spending on weapons. He thought they could outspend the USSR and put them under huge pressure. And then hopefully they themselves would collapse. Um, he increased arms spending by 13% in 1982, um, another 8% in 1984, and introduced the Strategic Defence Initiative, or the SDI, um, known against Star Wars, which itself went against the um, Outer Space Treaty of 1967. Um, but basically, that um, the Strategic Defence Initiative had the capability to be able to disarm any Soviet missiles which were flying um, kind of from the Soviet Union to America. So it basically made all of the Soviet Union weapons um, completely useless. This put Brezhnev in a really, really tricky position because he knew um, that he did not have the power or capability anymore to attack the USA. And I suppose the power now was completely with the USA. So it's getting clear now by kind of 1984 that um, the USSR cannot go on for much longer. And now we are at a position where it is coming towards the end of the Cold War. As you'll see in the final lecture, which I think is number five, um, we're going to see uh, the final Soviet leader, um, Gorbachev, and the policies that he introduces, um, which lead to the end of the Cold War.